able to pull off the upset, the Sooners would be forced to share that Big 12 South crown. And they do. Don't like to share anything. It is Bedlam, and it's coming up next on FSN. Today in Norman, Oklahoma, guaranteed Bedlam. Oh, mama, what a hit. Ball bound Oklahoma State takes a road trip into a not so welcoming Norman, Oklahoma crowd. Oh, you! Yeah. Oh, you! Yeah. The Sooners need this victory for a chance at the Big 12 championship. But there's a bunch of questions surrounding the condition of the offense. The Cowboys have upset Oklahoma before. Remember 2001 in Norman? Touchdown, Oklahoma State! For 10th ranked Oklahoma, everything is on the line. For Oklahoma State, a solid shot at being the spoiler again. OSU at Oklahoma. Around here, it's called the Bedlam Series. Next on FSN. Overcast day in Norman, Oklahoma. Count on the fans and these two rivals to heat it up in college football action. Welcome to Kiyosara's College Football Saturday. Today it's Bedlam. Oklahoma State faces the number 10 ranked team in the country, the Oklahoma Sooners. Welcome everyone. They've met over a hundred times. These two cannot stomach one another. We look forward to a dandy battle today. Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. Bill Land, Gary Reasons with you. You don't need to know the records. You do need to know the conditions of the quarterbacks, though, for Oklahoma. Sam Bradford knocked out last week by a concussion. Back should be ready. If he is, OU looks good. Well, Sam Bradford needs to play in this football game, and he will, Bill. He leads the nation in passing efficiency. He's done a great job running this offense. 28 touchdowns and only six interceptions. When he plays, they have a chance to win, and he needs to be on the field. Only three plays last week against Texas Tech. We saw Joey Halsey most of that game. All right, on the other side for Oklahoma State, they became bowl eligible with a road win last week in Waco against the Baylor Bears. Their quarterback is a guy who does a little bit of everything, Zach Robinson. He was outstanding last weekend. Well, Zach Robinson's a dual-threat quarterback. He gets it done via the air and on the ground. Over 3,000 total yards for the offense for the Cowboys this year for Zach Robinson. And what he did last week against Baylor was pretty special. He showed he could get outside of the pocket, throw the football, use his arm to get points for the Cowboys. Boys, and also he can do it on the ground. Take a look at this play, the zone replay, which is going to be key in this football game against the Sooners. Zach Robinson could be a big weapon for the Cowboys. This is a rivalry that certainly lives up to its nickname, count on emotions to run high, and with more on that, we send it to the sidelines and Emily Jones. That's a quick history lesson for you this afternoon, and this rivalry actually has its roots in wrestling. The story goes that back in the day there was a wrestling match going on between these two schools at Gallagher Hall in Stillwater. A newspaper reporter emerged and said, quote, it's Bedlam in there. From then on, it's been called Bedlam. They played the first football game in 1904. The Sooners won 75 to nothing. I have a feeling it won't be that way today, but we'll see. Kick off when we come back. The Oklahoma Sooners run on ranked number 10 in the nation as they get ready for Bedlam here in Norman. Welcome, everyone. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, Emily Jones. Glad to have you with us at Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. Temperature 33 degrees. The winds not a factor yet, but yes, we see a little snow spitting around the area, but the field is in good condition. Mike Gundy, third year at Oklahoma State and trying to even things up on the ledger and has got his ball club bowl eligible as he comes in six and five after a 52-21 win at Baylor last weekend. And Bob Stoops, there's the most significant number of all the great numbers in Coach Stoops nine years here at Oklahoma. Only two losses, only one in the league in the Big 12, and that came to Oklahoma State in 2001. And we are set to kick it off as Dan Bailey Lines it up for Oklahoma State. And Iglesias is the deep man for University of Oklahoma. Oklahoma State won the coin toss, decided to defer to the second half, so Oklahoma will be on offense. You mentioned win, not much of a factor here today. And Bailey with his boot and Iglesias at the three. The 20, got some room, 30, 40. 
Iglesias bumped out of bounds near midfield on the Oklahoma sideline, and Bailey, the kicker, is the one that knocked him down. Bill Joaquin Iglesias has been a big part of this football team this season for Oklahoma, not only as a receiver, but also in the kick return game, and gives his football team great field position here with an opening kickoff up over right out to midfield. So great job by Oklahoma getting things started here to get out going. A 46-yard return, and Sam Bradford leads our Kiyosera starters. Last week, just three plays before a fumble and a tackle that he made, and it knocked him out of the game. We'll be interested to see how he goes here this afternoon. And the handoff on the first play takes it right to the Oklahoma State 45-yard line. As Alan Patrick, averaging 5.4 per carry, goes against that Oklahoma State defense that has been a little bit porous at times. Fountain, Chatham, Cummings, Peterson, three sacks last week. Sexton, Levine, Woods, the linebackers, Lacey Moore, Price, and Cox in the secondary. Yeah, I think they're going to be challenged up front here, this defensive front by Oklahoma playing power football today. On a second down, it is Patrick takes it down to the 39, and he has got a first down. Alan Patrick, and they'll move the chains from the get-go. And we've got a little precip here as well. Here's Patrick's numbers on the years. They have had some problem with the consistency, though, last week. As a matter of fact, two carries is all he had. DeMarco Murray was the big gainer, but he got knocked out at the tail end of the game after a 94-yard performance. And it's Patrick and Brown that will lead the way today in the backfield for Oklahoma. First and 10 at the 39, and Bradford throws and completes to Kelly. And Kelly stopped at the 37, 38-yard line by Jacob Lacey, a junior out of Garland, Texas. Let's take a look at our KFC scouting report. Well, Oklahoma, all what they need to do here, I think, for Sam Bradford is distribute the football. That's to his playmakers, Bill. Get it to his tailbacks and also to his receivers. Get the tight end in the action. On defense, I think they've got to take care of the edge. Zach Robinson runs that zone read very well, and they've got to take care of the ball here at home. No place like home under Bob Stoops, 53-2 and two here in Gaylord Memorial Family Stadium. TCU, the only other school to win here. Patrick on a second and nine goes to the left side. Post attack was led by Donovan Woods. The 6'2 senior out of Oklahoma City. One of the long line of the Woods brothers, if you're not familiar with their play at Oklahoma State. And he's starting at his third different position, once a quarterback and a safety, and now as a linebacker. Well, for Oklahoma State, the KFC report here is to attack offensively. When they get out there on the field, but defensively, I think they need to move their front. They're undersized compared to OU's huge offensive line. They got to take care of the football. They cannot afford turnovers in this ball game to have a chance to win. Third down and seven. Breaking tackles and may have the first down as he stretches across the 30-yard line. Martel Van Zant, senior from Tyler, Texas, making the tackle. Van, St Van Zant, a very inspirational story. Deaf and a guy that uh, started the season as a starter, had a bit of a turf toe, and he's getting the start here today. Well, you see Oklahoma, what they want to do, Bill, is be power football. They're going to run the football inside. Chris Brown gives you that power at the tailback spot. A little bit more power, I think, than Alan Patrick, who's a little more of a speed guy. Going to go for it on fourth and one. Oklahoma, 6-15 and 15 in fourth down situations this year. Brown is the guy to do it. First down and more. Bulls his way to the 25-yard line. The opening possession, if you just joined us, Oklahoma got a 46-yard kickoff return by Iglesias, and they again move the chains here, approaching the red zone, first and 10 at the 25. Well, Chris Brown has been the short yardage back for Oklahoma this season, Bill, and he just kind of picks his way through there, does a good job of letting his linemen do some work out there in front of him, and three or four yards there for the first down, so Oklahoma doing a good job moving the ball early. Oklahoma averages 43 points a game and total offense of 454. First and 10, Bradford. Great protection. Brown out of the backfield. The 20. And the flag is dropped back at the 26-yard line. Ricky Price makes the tackle. A junior from Houston out of Cy Falls High School. Let's take a look at this here. I know the Sam Bradford threw this ball out to the flat. Offside, defense, number 56. Five-yard penalty, first down. 
Maurice Cummings, the culprit for the Cowboys. Well, on this play, you got to be patient here. What I mean by that, you got Joe John Finley, who's his tight end, and he's going to run down the field here and to the back of the end zone. He's actually going to be wide open on this play for Sam Bradford, but he decides to throw it to the flat. Take a look at it. If you hold it right there, you see where, uh, excuse me, Joe John is behind the defenders, and he throws downhill to Chris Brown. Gives OU a first and five at the 20. Chris Brown, big time tackle made as Roderick Johnson breaks through, the sophomore from Galveston, Texas, to make the stop. You know, the Cowboys defense needs to stiffen here, Bill, this undersized defensive front that they have. They've got to stack the line of scrimmage. They're going to have to bring people around the perimeter here. OU's offensive line is huge, up over 330 pounds, average there against this defensive front. Should take a look at Rod Johnson, who's getting some playing time here today. Staying corrected, a senior out of Galveston. Both these teams a little thin, as you might expect when you get to game number 12, and injuries have taken their toll. Second down and five. Right up the middle, Patrick has the first down and stopped near the 10-yard line. Sexton and Price, the tacklers for Oklahoma State. Just power of football up front. John Cooper, the center, Brandon Walker, and Duke Robinson, the two guards inside for Oklahoma, just making the way easy for Chris Patrick to come in. Alan Patrick through there, through the hole. A good job by the offensive front. And I'll tell you, it's a big hole here. If you just kind of hold it there and take a look at what Alan Patrick has as he comes right into your living room, folks. And Good job of Cameron making a tackle on him. Otherwise, he's in for the touchdown by Ricky Price. Patrick last year, 23 carries, 163 yards in the Bedlam game in Stillwater and scored a touchdown, playing in the place of the injured Adrian Peterson. And first and goal, Bradford all day. Got Patrick. He is in the end zone, and it's a touchdown, Oklahoma. Patrick with his first receiving touchdown of the season on his eighth reception. Donovan Woods was the man that tried to cover him, but Bradford, his 29th TD pass. Well, you want to see on the outside of the left there, Joe John Finley. They think they're going to throw the tight end in the red area. Good job by Sam Bradford coming underneath to the check down, which is Alan Patrick, and gets that ball into the end zone for him. 11 yards on the pass, and the point after attempt by Garrett Hartley. South Lake, Texas is good, and Oklahoma very impressive on the opening drive of the ball game. It's 7-0 Sooners. So with Alan Patrick keying off the Kawasaki scoring drive, nine plays, 50 yards. Bradford tying the NCAA freshman quarterback record with his 29th touchdown pass. And remember, just three plays in last week's game. And... Oklahoma will now kick it off. Devereaux and Paris Cox are deep. Devereaux on the left, they're number 10. Paris Cox on the right side. Cox from the 10. 20, 25, and is tripped up near the 27-yard line. 17 yards will give him on the return. The tackle by Jimmy Stevens of Oklahoma. And that'll bring out Oklahoma State. The Cowboys averaging nearly 35 points a game, 38 in Big 12 play, one of the most explosive offenses in the country. Running the show is Zach Robinson, the sophomore quarterback from Littleton, Colorado, who has thrown for 2,417 yards. And he's got him first and 10 from the 27. Fakes to the running back and is tackled for a loss on the play at the 19-yard line. Nick Harris comes through with the sack and a loss of eight. Let's take a look at our Kia Sarah starting lineup for OSU. Robinson, a rude welcome to Norman. He is number 14 in the nation in pass efficiency. He's got a strong offensive line with Koning and Okung anchoring things up front. And this is a club that can explode at any time. Here is Robinson keeping, and Harris is again there to trip him up. So Oklahoma State third and long from the get-go. Now let's take a look at the Oklahoma defense that is allowing 18 points a game, 18th in the country. Beal is a defensive end that's getting a start today. They've lost three DNs so far this season to injury. Lofton leads them in tackles, certainly an honors candidate. 
And they've got a secondary that is among the best in the nation. Man, you wonder what Oklahoma's going to do with the absence of two defensive ends, Austin English and Allen Davis out of the football game, and Jeremy Beal getting a start here this, morning, this afternoon. Across the middle and incomplete, and Oklahoma, they come out, they take it the length of the field and score after a great return. Then they stuff them on the first series, and now they get the football back in great field position. Uh, great opportunity there for the Oklahoma Sooners to come down and play a good, do a good job on the edge. I talked about the edge play. Nick Harris playing huge there in their first series, the first couple of plays, getting a hold of Zach Robinson. Matt Fodge back to, pick, to kick it away. Reggie Smith takes it on the 33. Smith, 35, and across the 40. Excellent field position, even though it was an outstanding punt. 46 yards on the kick, 10 on the return, and that's where Oklahoma will get possession with a 7-0 lead. You're watching it all on FSN's College Football Saturday. Well, we're going to have fun today when we get to talking about the mess that is the BCS. Here is Patrick. Breaking tackles. 40, 30, got to beat one. And brought down near the 20-yard line. Jacob Lacy, the touchdown-saving stop for the Cowboys. Alan Patrick on fire early here in Norman. Well, what you want, yards after contact. And Alan Patrick does a great job coming inside. And this looks like he didn't have a lane to run through here. You take a look at him, he's going to get stopped right there, then work backside. It's a good job of breaking tackles at the line of scrimmage. But Jacob Lacy with makeup speed brings Alan Patrick down. Otherwise, he's in for the score, Bill. 41 yards on the pickup, and an OSU player is hurt on the play as... The Sooners back in the red zone. Tongatea. Tongatea Jr. is the injured player, the six foot, 310 pound junior out of Anchorage, Alaska. Came from Snow Junior College in Utah. And again, number of players been hurt. You mentioned those defensive ends for Oklahoma. Uh, and Mike Gundy has seen his share of injuries. Now, Darius Bowman was the most significant out with a knee sprain and didn't play last week against Baylor. Wasn't expected to play today, but apparently we learned practice lightly this week. He warmed up and looked pretty good in warm-ups. And we'll see if he gets a go today. And it's good to see that Tonga Tea is able to go off on his own power here. Yeah, in Oklahoma State, they are actually rolling their defensive front. Their defense coordinator, Tim Beckman, rolling his defensive lineman in and out of the ball game. Nate Peterson. It's been out of the game, the defensive end spot, and playing Hugo Chanasa in there as well. So they're rolling some guys in there. If they lose Tongatea for a period of time, it could be a problem for the Cowboy defensively. First and 10 from the 20. Brown, the ball carrier. Van Zant, the tackler. And that play for Oklahoma, 41 yards. The 33rd time this season they've gone for 40 or more. Yeah, they've done a great job with explosive plays in the offense. And good job by... Oklahoma making big plays here. See the uh, sign language person for Oklahoma State that is with Martel Van Zandt all the time and he had an outstanding year last year with 67 tackles and a couple of interceptions. Injuries caused him to climb a little bit this year. It's still very sound. Here is Brown on the carry. Takes it near the 17-yard line. And Patrick Levine, sophomore from Houston, Texas, Jersey Village High School, with the tackle for the Pokes. Yeah, and Levine, number four for the Cowboys, has done a pretty good job for him. He leads him in tackles, Bill, as a sophomore. Good-sized linebacker, 6'3", 225-pounder in there. And he's a very mobile guy also. So they like what he brings as a linebacker to that defense. 73 stops. Their defense much maligned. Last week rose up against Baylor, though, and did a nice job as they held them to 309 yards of total offense and a convincing 52-21. Victory by the Cowboys. Third and seven here at the 17. Bradford gets him set. And Brown. And Brown. What a hit and still spinning and down inside the five-yard line first and goal for Oklahoma. Well, I talked about power football and both of these tailbacks for Oklahoma, Alan Patrick and Chris Brown, showing that they can be physical runners when they get the football in their hands and they're taking it right at this Cowboy defense. Chris Brown lowers his head on that play and just takes it right into the heart of the Cowboy defense and he comes out of there and he wins this battle. You see that contact in there? 12-yard pickup. He's trying to make a tackle. I think it was Quentin Moore he bounced off of, so and here is Patrick, and he rolls into the end zone. Another touchdown.
touchdown for Alan Patrick, and Oklahoma quickly gets its second score of the afternoon. Well, being committed to power football, running the football against Oklahoma State is a formula that I think that Bob Stoops thinks is a one for success here against his team. And great job of blocking up front there. Joe John Finley, the tight end, getting his man out of the way to allow Patrick into the end zone. So Alan Patrick picks up his second touchdown of the day, his sixth rushing TD of the season. And Hartley on for the PAT. And it is good. So Hartley makes it a 14-0 game, and the Sooners stunning the rival Cowboys in the early going here in Norman. Welcome back to Norman. 14-0 Sooners lightning early here with 6.24 to go in the first quarter in our Kawasaki scoring drive for Oklahoma, just six plays, 58 yards, covered in 243, and Patrick with a five-yard run, his second score of the day. And Garrett Hartley will kick it off for Oklahoma. Hartley booms this one. Parrish Cox. 20, got a little room, and then brought down with a flag thrown near the 25-yard line as Oklahoma's Demario Pleasant makes the tackle. They're going to be a block in the back on this, so they'll uh, send him back about 10 yards. I think it might have been Lewis Baker coming back on the block on the near hash mark. Let him sort it out here. Block in the back during the return. 10 yard penalty. First down. Now I'll take another look here at this Oklahoma touchdown here. We're playing power football. If you get blocks from the tight end, you take a look here at Joe John Finley, who's going to come down and get a block on the linebacker right here. We'll see how things can unfold here for the line, for the offense and gets there right on the linebacker. Just does a pancake block there for Alan Patrick. Well done there by the Sooners. Cowboys now first and 10 from their 13. This is like their opening drive, which ended up negative yards. Robinson fakes to Savage, sheds a tackler and dives across to the 21 yard line and DJ Wolf makes the tackle and understand the importance here folks. He'd been eating too much turkey over the weekend and followed the happenings. Oklahoma with a win wins the Big 12 South. And we'll get back to that. Let's take a look, Gary. Here's his own replay. And he's reading the defense. If you hold it right there, you see the defensive end actually goes all the way down. That's right there. He's down the line. And this is what allows Zach Robinson to go into the hole. Excellent job by the quarterback of reading it. That's going to be a key play for Oklahoma State all day today. Robinson keeps again, has the first down and more, and a blocker. 35, cuts it back across the 40, out to the 45-yard line. Reggie Smith makes the tackle. If you haven't seen Zach Robinson, this is not a surprise. 705 yards rushing coming in. And I think he... Again, watch the defensive lineman come down. There's the big gap inside and missed tackle there by Lindy Holmes. And... Brandon Pettigrew helping out on the backside. They're doing a good job of blocking downfield. So that's what the Cowboys want to do. They want to exploit the edge against the Sooners today. First and 10 at the 44. Understand if Oklahoma State wins today, a three-way tie for the South for the Cowboys, Sooners, and Texas. And they would determine because of tiebreakers. There are seven different tiebreakers. They'd have to go to the highest BCS rating when it comes out which most likely in that scenario would be Oklahoma, but you don't Ball know because there's the human factor of voting. Offense, number 65. It's a five-yard penalty. So, First down. Added importance for Oklahoma State. Not that they need it in a game like this, but Mike Gundy's got to like his club's chances until what happened in the first part of this football game today. Well, they've got to get some momentum offensively here that the Oklahoma definitely offense is doing a good job rolling on the football. Oklahoma State needs to match that intensity. First and 15 at the 39 as a poach back in a bit of a hole again. And the pass is completed. Savage on the reception. Reggie Smith makes the tackle at the 37 and a half yard line. Yeah, that's a big time play by Reggie Smith. The cornerback comes up and he takes care of business on the outside. You take a look at Reggie Smith. He's going to be right here and watch him just come up and explode this play as the ball is thrown up to the corner here. When the quarterback can break on the ball like this and make a play before the lineman can get out there, it's a big time play. Second and 16 now from the 38 officially. Cowboys trailing 14 nothing. And again, Robinson, some nifty ball handling there and getting nice gaps to run through. And he runs it this time to pass the 48-yard line. 
And it's third and reasonable coming up now. We'll call it five, it looks like. Well, what Oklahoma State does offensively, Bill, with the zone read is it gives you just the impression of that you're going to run the football, but it's more like option football. And, and for a defense, you have to be option conscious, which means assignment football. And not assignment sound. You're going to get big gaps in the defense, and Zach Robinson's found a few holes today. Third and five, Robinson going to keep it again. Has the first down as he lopes across into Sooner territory. Down near the 43-yard line. He picked up 11 on the last carry. Baker makes the tackle this time after an eight-yard gain. There's Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, was concerned with all the injuries the defensive end at the ability for this defense to take care of that zone read and that option play. Well, when you got a quarterback who's got nifty feet like Zach Robinson does, he can help himself out there in the passing game as well, avoiding the rush, which is what he does there against the Sooners. First and 10 at the 43 for Oklahoma State. Trying to get their feet under him now. This time, Savage. And still backwards, but moving forwards. And inside the 35-yard line. Now, I want to remind you also, the other half of the Big 12, the Biggie tonight, is up in Kansas City with Kansas and Missouri to play. And the winner there goes to San Antonio as the other half of the Big 12 championship game. Yeah, good job here by... Dantrell Savage of reading it to the outside. Brady Baum, the right tackle, did a good job of sealing on the outside to allow him to get out there. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Look better with Overstock.com. It's all about the O. Second and two for the Cowboys at the 35 of Oklahoma. Trailing 14 zip. Zach Robinson back to pass on a play action. And incomplete, looking for Pettigrew, Brandon Pettigrew. There's some great tight ends in this game today. Covered that time by Lindy Holmes. Pettigrew, a junior from Tyler, Texas, has 32 receptions and four touchdowns. And of course, Jermaine Gresham for Oklahoma has 10 touchdown receptions. Yeah, the tight ends are big in this ball game. For Oklahoma State, they've got to spread the ball around offensively to different receivers. They're looking for Des Bryant, number one, to step up and kind of fill the shoes of Darius Bowman. He's on the sidelines today, and I'm not sure if he's going to get in the ball game. He won up before the football game, and I don't know if they're going to utilize him today or not. Third and two for Oklahoma State from the 35. We're talking a 52-yard field goal attempt. They need some action here. Robinson leans close to the first down. Would appear that he's got it. We'll see where they spot near the 32-yard line. And Ryan Reynolds making the tackle for Oklahoma. Reynolds, a sophomore out of Las Vegas, Nevada, has battled some injuries. I'm going to measure this here very close here as you take a look at Zach Robinson. He sees a gap and tries to exploit it, get up there and jump over. And Reynolds on the tackle, and he stretches over. Looks like he may have enough for the first down, Bill, just from looking upstairs here. Oklahoma State made a change in their kickers just a week or two ago. And it's first down. They won't need to worry about kicking right now as they pick it up. And first down, Cowboys. Bob Stoops looking on. You know, you never know what to expect in these games, but I think we both expect an offensive game because these offenses are so strong in this, the year of the offense in the Big 12. Yeah, the points, I'm telling you, the points in this conference have really gone up this year in the last several years in the Big 12 conference. And these two offenses can both put it up on the board. Cowboys, you see the current drive approaching four minutes. That is scrimmage the 32. Robinson, good protection. Knocked around and incomplete. Trying to connect with Pettigrew and hitting on the play was DJ Wolf. And Wolf has had a great year at that strong safety spot with 65 tackles coming in. Also leads him in picks with four. Yeah, good timing here by Wolf hitting Brandon Pettigrew. The ball's there, right? His face mask just doesn't see the football. Got to get his head around the big tight end a lot quicker than that. So Robinson, who's had a great afternoon running the football, is 0-4 in the passing game. Robinson is 7 for 46 in a running game. And this time they keep it on the ground as Savage rolls. He's got a first down inside the 20-yard line. Dantrell Savage, a senior out of Columbus, Georgia, averaging at... 5.9 per carry coming in. Yeah, and over a thousand yards rushing on the season. Really missed the first ball game, so just doing this work here as he's done all season. Last eight games, Bill, 800. Excuse me, eight consecutive games first had 100 yards rushing. That's tremendous for for running back. Yeah, over a thousand yards in those eight games after the early season injury. He, Mike Gundy, will tell you, he really changes the whole attitude 
And the signature of this football team on the offensive side. Great leader besides a great player. First and ten. Robinson, a huge hole. He runs and still on his feet. And down he lost the football. Cowboys appear to have recovered at the 12-yard line. Zach Robinson, he that? saw end zone for a moment. I think Gerald McCoy forced the fumble. Okay. Take another look. Yeah, Zach Robinson, everything was taken care of in the secondary by the Sooners, and the ball was stripped out there. Good job by Curtis Lofton, Lofton the yeah. linebacker, pulling that football out as he's doing there. Watch his right arm and strip that ball out. Good coaching there by the Sooner coaches. Keeps those linebackers to pull that football away and perhaps get a football back to your offense. Punishing hit, second and three at the 12. Another loose football, and Robinson smothers this one as he and Savage had trouble making the handoff. Yeah, one of the keys I talked about for Oklahoma State is ball security. You cannot afford to put the ball on the ground here, especially on a good drive, getting down there inside the red zone. You want to come away with the points. Mike Gundy knows that his football team has to take care of that football. We are having a little precip here, so that adds to it on a cold day in Norman. And not that that's the one usually this time of year, but... They've had terrific weather around here throughout this football season. This came in just in the last day or so. Third down and seven for Oklahoma State. Trailing 14-0. Robinson, the screen, and Oklahoma State will score. Savage takes it into the end zone. And the Pokes get on the board with 31 seconds to go in the first quarter. Well, Larry Fedora, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma State, dials in a good play here against what Oklahoma brings defensively, and that's a blitz. Take a look at the top of the screen here on the right side. You're going to see, going to see pressure from the Oklahoma defense coming in there on him. He tosses it right over the top. And watch the block and one on the outside, and that's all you have to do. Just get a little bit of them. Excellent job of making room there for the tailback to get out there. Kicking team shifts, and Dan Bailey will try for his 12th consecutive PAT, 11 of 11. And Bailey converts. So the Cowboys settle down this big bedlam crowd here in the home field of the Oklahoma Sooners with their opening score. And this could be a screenplay over the top here. Take a look at the outside and watch the big guy coming to the outside out. And there's Brady Bond getting a little piece there. That's all Dantrell Savage needs is a little space to get through it. Good drive there by Oklahoma State. And Dontrell ninth touchdown this season for the Cowboys. And that Oklahoma defensive effort that was so stout on the first series, now they've got to go back and recheck their game plan as Oklahoma State. 13 plays, an impressive drive, and overcame a couple penalties along the way. Yeah, they kind of blended there, and Zach Robinson, a lot of that with his feet and his knowledge and what he's seeing on the field as being an option-type quarterback out of the, the zone replay. Thirty-one seconds remaining. Crowd of over eighty thousand here today, not letting this weather deter them at all. As Oklahoma and Oklahoma State and the Big Twelve South at stake here today. Bailey will kick it off with thirty-one seconds to go in the quarter. Once again. Iglesias is deep with Patrick. There's Alan Patrick who scored the first two touchdowns. And Iglesias has had a great year, not only in the kick return game, but receptions. Coming in. And this one taken by Patrick. Breaks it up the middle across the 30. And they'll spot it near the 32. Van Zant, the tackler for Oklahoma State. That's one of those things where you've got two returners back there, Alan Patrick and also Joaquin Iglesias. And one of them was supposed to take it and one's supposed to block, but Iglesias was actually behind Alan Patrick on that. If he'd helped him block, he might have picked up one. Somebody could pick somebody off to get even more yardage on that, but a nice return nonetheless out past the 30-yard line. So let's see what Oklahoma comes up with after the 21-yard return. First to 10 at the 32. Bradford. Incomplete. Now they're going to get Nate Peterson, the defensive end here, picking his hand up off the ground and coming forward. Is a, going to be offsides here against the Cowboys. 
Offside, defense, number 13. It'll be a five-yard penalty, first down. I thought it was interesting. Peterson, who is undersized at 6'2", 240, they were talking about how he would handle Phil Lodeholt, 6'8", 350, and Mike Gundy said, we'll just tell him to go between his legs. <laughs> yeah, you might need to do that. That's 100 pounds difference between those two, and if they match up today, Big Phil may have the advantage there. That's what I'm talking about, the defensive front from Oklahoma State. They need to move that defensive front to give them a chance to be successful today. Peterson on the other side this time, it appears. First and five now. And Patrick. That's good. Tough that's yards at the 40, 41 yard line. And Roderick Johnson, the tackler. Yeah, Rod Johnson doing a nice job of staying at home, waiting for the cutback. He's a linebacker. He's got to step up and make that play. He does a nice one there for the Cowboys. Final seconds ticking off here of the first quarter. And exciting as we expected, and the offenses, other than that first series for OSU, have controlled. It is Oklahoma with a couple of Patrick touchdowns, leading it 14 to 7. We'll be back after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper Bobbins. Welcome back to Norman, 14 to 7. The Sooners on top as we begin the second quarter, and we are here with. I would like to call you guys the first family of Oklahoma State football, Mr. and Mrs. Woods. We've got Lawrence and Juana Woods have had three sons play for Oklahoma State. You're watching the final game in which Donovan will play today. Mr. Woods, what's it like? Well, it, it has far exceeded any of our imagination. We were just so delighted to have one son to play Division I football, but to have all three and to be a part of it, it is a blessing, and we are delighted to have been a part of it. Mrs. Woods, have you thought about what it's going to be like not having a son on the football field? It's been since 1999 was the last time there wasn't a Woods boy on the football field for Oklahoma State. Well, I'm sure we'll keep busy doing high school and little league, but we'll be back on that college trail soon. Now, there's been some great memories that your sons have made uh, at this university. Anything stick out in particular to you? Well, how can we forget the 16 and 13 victory when no one expected us to even show up? And we came in and played a game of the year right here in this stadium. And it was so refreshing and rewarding to be a part of a victory here because they don't come too often here. And Rashawn had a big part in that one. We also saw a highlight of Donovan throwing a pass to Dewan. I mean, you guys have got some great members. Do you know about the mileage you guys have racked up? Oh, no. <laughs> no don't know about the mileage, but I know we've attended about 100 or more games. And I have to ask, are there any other Woods boys we should know about? Or are you guys officially done with sons? We're finished with sons. We're just waiting <laughs> on grandsons. Got some grandsons. Yeah, I hear there's generation. one that's 10 years old that's in the works. So, so keep, keep posting. Right? All right, Gary Woods, uh, and he's a natural. He loves the game, and uh, he has all of the gifts necessary to become an outstanding player if he continues to enjoy it and work at it. And I, I would think that uh, OSU would probably have a, a little bit of a favor in, in the eyes of uh, any Woods at this point in time. And, and guys, we talked to Mike Gundy about it this week, and I don't know if you guys know about this, but he's trying to get something in the works for you guys. He said, my goodness, they should at least be lifetime season ticket holders. So there's no telling what's in store for you if Coach Gundy has anything to say about it. Right? Would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. That's a little experience. Experience. That's a little give back there. Thank you. All right, thanks, Emily. That is quite a story. I'll tell you what, uh, the years that they have spent. Meanwhile, Oklahoma churning out the yards and getting the first down, it would appear, on that carry by Brown. Van Zant made the tackle. We may measure. We'll see here. Yeah, and some of the memories by the Woods brothers that we've had over the years, Bill, to seeing Rashawn and Dewan and, and also Donovan here going from the quarterback role to the safety and now the linebacker role. So pretty impressive for what that family has brought to Oklahoma State. Yeah, just an absolute credit. Uh, great to see and uh, join themselves here today. Well, they signal first down for Oklahoma, so the Sooners with a 14-7 lead, first and 10 at the 45 now. You can see the numbers that Donovan Woods has put up as an outside linebacker, and he's fitted pretty well there. I think it suits his talents pretty well. Yeah, and the adjustment to make all those changes and be such a team player when you were the quarterback tells you about his character. Bradford got all done, gonna run it. 
Bradford at the 40, the 35, and scampers out of bounds. Now, let's understand that Oklahoma's not going to risk anybody. Bob Stoops very emphatic that, hey, doctors are going to determine how he plays or whether he plays. We'll get more to that in a moment here. First of all, check with Mike Goldberg, Dr. Pepper Game Break. Bill, thank you very much. A meeting with LSU could await if number 18 Tennessee can dispose of Kentucky. Eric Ames has thrown for over 300 yards and four touchdowns already in the game. Wildcats just scored, though. It's a 10-point game, a win, and Tennessee wins the SEC East. All right, thanks very much, Mike. As we go here, it's Oklahoma trying to score again, and Patrick at the 10 cuts it back, goes down inside the five-yard line. Ricky Price with a stop for Oklahoma State, but in truth, Oklahoma State's not had an answer for Oklahoma State so far. Well, run the home, I should say. Yeah, and running the football, you've got to be able to come up and tackle him. You're on the outside, which is Jacob Lazy, who's the right cornerback. State. You've got to come up and get your head up there. You can hold it right there at the end. You're going to see the jump right there, right over. That's Jacob Lacey on the ground, and he needs to come up and stick to Alan Patrick right between the numbers instead of going for the knee. Great job of running there by Alan Patrick, getting his feet up over the cornerback on the edge. Over the 100-yard mark now. 10 carries, 107. Will he get his third touchdown? First and goal from the two. And nothing doing this time as OSU bows up. Sexton making the tackle. That's a good firm tackle by Andre Sexton, stepping up in there in the Sooner backfield and Chris Brown. making a tackle on Chris Brown. I'm just going to say about Bradford, though, that Bob Stoops said his doctors determine whether he plays or not. And they said everything went fine this week. They brought him along slowly. But that doesn't mean you want him running all over the football field either, Gary. No, and they're not going to run him like the Oklahoma State utilizes Zach Robinson. He's not a runner out there. He's a, he's a pocket passer. He's a guy who distributes the football. Obviously, he's uh, very sharp here today. Second down, and Oklahoma rolls in. Brown gets his first score of the day. Three yards out, and Oklahoma now with a 20 to 7 lead pending the kick. Well, not much answer right now for Oklahoma State against this power running football team that Oklahoma's rolling out there today. Big block on the outside by Brandon Braxton here on the left side for the Oklahoma football team, allowing Chris Brown to get in the end zone. And this offensive line bill for the Sooners have they've kind of taken a little heat over the last several weeks of not being a powerful running football team and I know that Bob Stoops wants to get that turned around here, especially if they look towards the Big 12 championship game and another bowl game. Yeah, of course, Big 12 title game down in San Antonio next weekend, partly for the point after. And it is good. So Brown gets his seventh touchdown of the season all in the last six games, counting this one in Oklahoma, up 21-7. back here to Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium and Oklahoma State with a third and goal from the one and they'll rush right up and set up. Savage is the tailback. Zach Robinson turns. No signal. Don't think he made it, Gary. No, I don't think it's Zach Robinson read this very well. He had the pitch opportunity to Dantrell Savage on the outside with a one-on-one -on -one area there. And Zach Robinson tried to turn it up too soon, Bill. He should have pitched his football. Great job here by the Sooners. Take a look on the outside. You see the pitch opportunity there. You have a one Sooner, Reggie Smith, or it might have been Nick Harris outside. Looking to take him, but good job inside to Marcus Granger, number 96 there to lead the charge for the Sooners. And Oklahoma State looks like they're going to go for it. We were talking during the break. The temperature or the tempo of this game, you would think they almost need to. Robinson. Fumble the football. Oklahoma picks it up. And the Sooners not only have stopped them, they bring it out to the 11 or 12 yard line on the return. DJ Wolf. Well, what Zach Robinson is trying to do, Bill, here at the end of the play, he takes the play around and it's an option chance for him to take that ball around the edge. And he tries to extend the football over the end line. Don't know if we'll see that ball. If he actually gets the ball over the end line on the, before the ball comes out, does he have control of it before the fumble? Oh, Lose no, the football just appear. before. Good job by the Sooners of reacting there around the edge. And when they pick it up, D.J. Wolf gets that football back for the for the Sooners. I'm sure that the officials are going to take a look at this to see just when that ball came out. DeMarcus Granger looked like he's the one that caused the fumble. They're going to review the play, and Nick Harris may have forced the fumble. Wolf is the man that came up with it. Wow, what action here in Bedlam football. We'll be back. 
offense here, but they're only going to do that if need be. I think their, their mindset is to be physical against this Oklahoma Cowboy defense. Second down and seven. Bradford here, wide open. It is complete to the big fella, Jermaine Gresham. And Gresham takes it down to the 33-yard line. Gresham, we mentioned earlier, how about this for productivity? That's his 32nd reception. He's got 10 touchdowns this year. Well, he's a, he's a big-time receiver. He's a guy that they want to get out in the package and going to get him down the field. We'll take a look at him. He's going to run out, outside. And Jermaine Gresham is a guy that you know, he's got good size, good ability, and he just sits to the outside. Very easy, comfortable throw for Sam Bradford. 19-yard pickup and a quick snap, and Brown pushed out of bounds inside the 23-yard line as Quentin Moore makes the tackle and a flag on the play. You know, back to Gresham. Bob Stoops doesn't just throw praise around. He mentions this guy in the vein of Adrian Peterson as far as big, dominating, great hands, strong, fast. He said he is, has those type of skills. Holding offense number 18. Going to be a 10-yard penalty. First down. Uh, did you jinx him, Bill? Uh, <laughs> Still didn't nullify the nullify the play though, as far as his ability. Yeah, he's a great <laughs> athlete, 6'6", 260 pounder, just a sophomore, and uh, 10 touchdowns on the season. And he's a guy that uh, they like a lot around here. And I know that the NFL scouts are looking at this guy and thinking that he's one of the might be one of the next best ones coming out. Yeah, just a sophomore, Ardmore, Oklahoma, and it'll be a first down, but now 16 for the Sooners. Is the line of scrimmage is a 38-yard line. Brown, 35, 30. And Brown gets about half of it back as Rod Johnson, the tackler for Oklahoma State. Yeah, not a very good angle that time by Donovan Woods, the outside linebacker coming up trying to make a tackle on Chris Brown, and got to be able to get in there and make make a play there at the nearer nearer the line of scrimmage. The Oklahoma Sooners doing a good job of running off the edge, and these these backs are reading the blocks of the linemen very well. Sooners after coming off that tough loss to Texas Tech 34 27. There's been no hangover from that as far as having one loss affect you in the next game. They've been sharp. Second down and eight. Bradford pumps left, comes back. Races, dances and nearly gets in. Stopped at the five on an ankle tackle as Van Zandt is there. It's Oklahoma knocking on the door again. First and goal after a 25-yard pickup to Iglesias. Well, when you got Sam Bradford back there throwing like this, he's going to have blocking up front, and it's a good job here by the left side of the offensive line. Take a look at Phil Lodehold here as he steps out to the outside and gets a block on the outside as the, the blitzer comes out there. Excellent job of picking that up and allowing him time to get the ball out to Iglesias. What productivity for this guy out of Colleen, Texas. 19 catches his first year, 41 last year, and this year coming in, 55, which was eighth best single season in OU history. And now the muscle, and Alan Patrick powers ahead down near the two-yard line. Bill, I've been on defensive lines and defensive fronts there where you cannot stop an offense from running the football, and that's one of the most disheartening things. And I think Oklahoma State, the Cowboys, are trying to find a way inside how they can stop this running game from Oklahoma. They haven't had an answer at all. 190 yards rushing so far on the afternoon here for Oklahoma just in the first half. Oklahoma's uh, been a different team here. Their two losses came on the road at Colorado and Texas Tech at home. They have been dominant. And they are again today. Second and goal from the two. Play action. Oh, he dropped the football. Wide open. Maybe too open for Dane Zaslaw, the senior from Edmond, Oklahoma. Van Zant was covering, but Zaslaw was wide open. Thought he had his second score of the year. Well, Sam Bradford could take his pick because he's got Joe John Finley. Look at the top of the screen there. It's Finley 19. He's open. Also 45. Zaslaw right there in the breadbasket. Goes through his hands. So third and goal from the two. Kelly in. Cody Eldridge goes out. Zaslaw the fullback and Patrick the tailback. Gresham comes set to the left. Bradford throws this one and it is complete touchdown. Finley. It's like, hey, I'm open. I won't drop it. Joe John Finley, the senior out of Arlington, Texas, his second TD of the season. Another big tight end here for the Sooners, 6'6", and 265 pounder, a great target. And I take a look at Sam Bradford's numbers, 30th touchdown pass, and that's the new NCAA freshman passing record for touchdowns. And get a little blocked there by your tailback. Alan Patrick takes one of the blitzers, and Joe John Finley, easy catch in the back of the end zone. 
That'll bring on Hartley. Sam Bradford with a TD pass, making it look easy as Finley wide open. And Oklahoma trying to make it 28-7. And they do as Hartley knocks it through. Flag on the play. Neither team returning to the field, though, assuming that's against Oklahoma State. And we'll hold tight for just a second. Terrence Anderson, the penalty on. Official still waiting and uh, the kicker by the defense. Penalties declined. Points are good. All right. 28-7. Pass. He's six of seven now for 69 yards. And the Sooners, a couple of TD passes from Bradford. Patrick has scored twice, Brown once, and Joe John Finley the last one. And Hartley will kick it off. Devereaux. Cox are deep. Up to the 10. And Devereaux looking for a hole. Comes to the sideline, the 30. Cuts it back up. That's a pretty good return. And it stopped at the 36. And let's send it down to Emily Jones. Somebody's retiring, I think, today. That's right, guys. Not only is it senior day here at Oklahoma, but it is the retirement day for Boomer and Sooner for 15 seasons. These two have been on the sidelines for OU home games. This is their 88th home game. In all, they have racked up 390 touchdowns. They run about 100 yards each touchdowns. If you do the math, more than 22 miles these two have logged. They are headed off to green pastures in Sepulpa, Oklahoma, where they will retire. This right here, the one on the left, this is Boomer. On the right, this is Sooner. A very, very happy day for these two as they will... Okay, okay, here we go. Now, if you don't know which one is which, guys, if you, you can tell by their hooves because this is Boomer here on the right and then Sooner on the left. And um, they're going to retire, as I mentioned, in Sepulpa, Oklahoma. And Boomer and Sooner 5 are already in training and ready to pull the OU Schooner come next season, guys. I wonder if that nail job is part of the scholarship here or not. Second down at 10. Savage was stopped on the first attempt for OSU. Thanks, Emily. And they throw it here, and Robinson connects with Des Bryant. And close to the first down marker, Reggie Smith covering on the play. A couple of a couple of little ponies out there. Good tradition here at Of course. I think it's Oates. Oh, is that him? <laughs> <laughs> first to 10. Follow the 47. Across the middle, deflected. And Oklahoma State as the Cowboys somehow managed to hang on to the football. Damian Davis and DJ Wolf is the one that had the opportunity at it. Davis, a freshman from Mark, Texas. A couple of Sooners had a chance to get this ball here. They're going to see the ball go up in the air and they're going to fight for it. DJ Wolf, and I think that's the linebacker as well. That was Lofton. Davis, second reception of the year. The pitch here. Look at Savage as he rolls and knocked out of bounds at around the 12-yard line. And Lindy Holmes makes the tackle. Yeah, don't say anything bad about this Oklahoma State offense. They can bounce right back into it. They're in a high-power, explosive type of offense. You see a couple of plays now. Now we're inside the 15-yard line. This is very quickly here. They had 610 yards against Texas Tech. And Savage. That's winning the edge that time. That time with the pitch for him is on reach. And Savage, now eight for 68 yards. First and 10, ball on the 13. Robinson to throw it. Knocked down as it came the back of Lofton, I believe. Second and 10 now, clock at 102. Cowboys still have all three of their timeouts, so that's not a big factor. Robinson hit hard. Nick Harris. His Oklahoma defense still bringing it. Yeah, the goal line stand that turned this first half around a bit. Oklahoma. Long way to go. Right now they're third and nine on the 12 with 55 seconds to go in the half. Robinson going to keep it. Ooh, bang. Helmet jarring at the 11-yard line. 
Jeremy Beal, I believe, as Robinson picks his hat back up. And it's fourth and goal from the eight. Good job here by the defensive end, Jeremy Beal going up, and he's going to take the back out of the backfield, and he reacts back. Watch him come into the screen here, bingo. Yeah, let me stay corrected. It's fourth and eight from the 11. And OSU talking it over here. Boy, tough decision here for Mike Gundy. It's easy for us to say, so at home, well, boy, if they're going to get in this, Gary, they're going to have to get a, uh, a touchdown. You got eight excited about what's happening. West Virginia playing right now. And we'll have more on that later. All right, they're going to take the field goal if they can convert here as Bailey boots this one. And it is good. So Bailey converts on the field goal attempt. And the Cowboys say, all right, we don't want to be denied twice in a row down here. Four seconds to go in the half. We'll have the kickoff when we come back for the 28-10 Oklahoma. And Bailey will now kick it off for the Cowboys with four seconds remaining in the half. It's the grounder and still comes to Iglesias at the 20. And Iglesias wrapped up, brought down. That'll be the end of the half near the 33-yard line. So the Oklahoma Sooners control things in this first half. They get a goal line stand. Bradford showing no problem. Six of seven for 69 yards. And they've got Alan Patrick running for 142 yards already at the half. And Oklahoma State Robinson throwing for 72 and they've got good run production from Savage and Robinson but they have not been able to slow down the Sooners and they trail a 28-10. You may know about OU. I'll go down to the field with Emily Jones and she's with Mike Gundy. Guys, thank you. Well, Coach, they're moving the ball pretty well on you guys. How do you stop that in the second half? We've got to stop the run. Obviously, if we can't slow the run down, it opens up all their play action pass. So we have to make some adjustments. They're overpowering us up front, our defensive front. So we got to be more physical and slow the run down. And then offensively, when we get in tight, we got to find a way to punch it in. What do you, what, do you just talk, chalk that up to a bad break there when you got it down so close on that one drive? That was a big momentum changer for you. Well, they whipped us up front. I mean, they just flat whipped us. And so we got to be more physical and get the ball punched in. All right, Coach. Best luck right, in the second half. We appreciate your time, guys. Thanks very much, Emily, as well as the coaches, Bob Stoops and Mike Gundy, for their cooperation here at the half and throughout the week, their entire staffs, and helping us get ready for this game as Oklahoma will kick it off here to the Cowboys. The sun peeking through after a lot of clouds and actually a little bit of snow spitting in the first half of this game. And it is taken by Devereaux at the 5. 15, 20, Devereaux looking for a crease and push forward to the 30, just shy of the 30-yard line. And that's where the Cowboys will take over. Talk about cliches, Gary, but how important is this first drive for OSU? Well, it's important for them because they were inside of Oklahoma's territory at the goal line and couldn't get the ball in on one play, and all of a sudden, you know, things turn around. They did get three points on the last drive out there, so they need to get this turned around. We'll take a look at the, the stars today. Alan Patrick did a great job around the football. Sam Bradford, very efficient, only one incompletion. And Zach Robinson, again, showing that he can do it on the ground, running the football, and also passing the ball. And they put it on the ground here in the hands of Dantrell Savage, an impressive run as he bolts out to the 43-yard line. G.J. Wolf makes the tackle. OSU's offense has been fine. This is an OU defense that has only been allowing 82 yards a game on the ground. OSU got 138 in the first half. Yeah, they did a decent job running it, and I tell you, uh, Oklahoma's defense only allowing 2.6 yards per rush coming into this football game. A lot different today on the ground with uh, Dan, excuse me, Dan Trill, Savage and Zach Robinson running the football. Savage picked up 14 on that first carry. And OU up to the challenge here, a stop after a gain of two. And Curtis Lofton making the tackle. Here's a look at the OSU possessions from the first half. Yeah, you got the one touchdown there about the fumble. The fumble was inside the goal line, it's on the one yard line there as Zach Robinson tried to put it in, into the end zone. They came away with no points on that possession. And then the next possession, they do get three points going into halftime. So. Oklahoma State needs to come out and answer and get some points on the board here to start this third quarter on this opening drive. Second and eight. Yeah, and following that fumble, OU took it the distance for another touchdown. Zach Robinson in trouble. Got creamed as he threw it away. 
And the pressure was put on Jeremy Beal, the man taking care of business, the freshman out of Carrollton, Texas, and Creekview High School. And Jeremy Beal getting a play today. Uh, Austin English not playing yet for the Oklahoma Sooners, who's out with an in injury. And take a look at uh, Curtis Lofton and what he's done as far as tackling. And now the single season all time leader at the tackles in a season. Curtis Lofton surpasses Rocky Kalmus. That's pretty good territory yeah. there. You pass Rocky Kalmus, you know you are in on some big time plays and Lofton just a junior from Kingfisher Oklahoma he is just continue to get better every time out third and eight now Robinson guns it and completes it out near the 40 of Oklahoma and Des Bryant makes the reception that'll move the chains and put him in Sooner territory Lindy Holmes the tackler a 15 yard gain for Oklahoma State Curtis Lofton almost gets there on the quarterback good job route here by Des Bryant getting in between the, the deep corner and that's going to be Reggie Smith and in front of the linebacker there so good job of throwing the football Des Bryant now with a couple of catches on the day and the Cowboys on a first and ten again with Savage carrying the football to the just past the 39 to Marcus Granger sophomore out of Dallas Kimball High School with the tackle kind of got us all excited here at the beginning of the ball game number 12 for Oklahoma State the uh, Darius Bowman was warming up before the ball game and thought we might we thought that we might see him playing in this football game for the Cowboys offensively but nothing yet for uh, Darius Bowman to come back out here and it's just a little bit of a decoy out there to have those guys, those seniors, think about him before the game and us and afters as well. Robinson rolls out, shows pass, and instead tucks it under. And he needed to get to the 30 for the first down. He's just a little short. Curtis Lofton once again meeting him there. Well, it's a good decision that time by Robinson rolling out of the pocket. His receivers all covered in the, in the secondary by the Sooners do a good job, and he takes it down and just runs, uses his speed. And watch Lofton come from the inside out. Good speed there and good job going to the football and good closing. Third down and one. Robinson looking for the signal still. The pitch to Savage. Savage cuts it up. Quick little burst and gets the first down to the 25-yard line. And Lewis Baker, the tackler for the Oklahoma Sooners. And Dantrell Savage continues to rack up the yards as he's closing in toward that century mark. Well, Nick, excuse me, Zach Robinson does a good job here taking it to the outside. And you're the man in the middle, number five, right there. Whoop, Nick Harris, what are you going to do? Take the quarterback or take the pitch? And he comes inside on the quarterback and good job of pitching the football by Robinson, running that option off the read. Robinson, by the way, has now passed the 2,500-yard mark in passing this season, second most in OSU season history. Wants to throw it here. Oh, just overthrowing a bit, looking for Devereaux. Well, he had Devereaux, too, up the seam there in the defense here for through Oklahoma. And good job by Zach Robinson finding, but that ball just a little bit too much air underneath it here. We'll take a look. He's down here at the bottom. That's going to run up the field, right up the seam as he's going to run right down the field here. So take a look at uh, Devereaux there. The ball sails just a little bit by, for Zach. Saw Robinson last year really burst on the scene a lot in the OU game as he relieved Bobby Reed from time to time. And this year finally just beat him out for the job. He threw for 345 yards and three scores last season. It is second down and 10. And ball again goes right up the middle. As Savage continues to carry the load. And Granger makes the tackle. Savage at 92 yards before that carry. He'll build this, this offense that Oklahoma State runs. Larry Fedora runs this offense, the offensive coordinator. And it's a creative offense. I like what he does with it. He spreads the, his players out. He gives the quarterback a chance to make plays and either run the ball or throw him the football. He's got playmakers out there. And it's a very fun offense to watch and a very explosive offense for the Cowboys. Third down and eight at the 23-yard line. Robinson under pressure has to throw the football away. Alonzo Dotson was putting the heat on him. Dotson, a senior out of Houston. Good coverage there by Lewis Baker, the linebacker, just sniffs out the screenplay. The Cowboys actually wanted to run it here. We'll take a look and watch number 16. He's going to be the linebacker right there, and he's going to come up. He's going to tackle the back. Actually tackles him right there on the 25-yard line. He can't get out, so Zach Robinson has to just throw the football away. So that'll bring on Dan Bailey for... 
a 40-yard field goal attempt. As Bailey, who hit earlier from 28 yards, kicks this one, hit the crossbar and hit the post, and no good. So Bailey can't connect here. And a disappointment for OSU and the OU fans. Happy crowd, 28-10 leader. Oklahoma State missing that field goal from 40, and the Oklahoma Sooners will get the football back first and 10, 23. Yeah, the most important thing, I think, for Oklahoma State coming out in the third quarter is how do you slow down this Oklahoma run game? Mike Gundy talking about we've got to stop the run. In Oklahoma, you know Bob Stoops. Why do you do anything different? As Andre Sexton makes the tackle here on Allen Patrick, who had 140-plus in that first half. And let's take a look at Oklahoma's rushing and left, middle, and to the right. Nothing wrong with running up the middle here. That's what Oklahoma has done doing a good job with it. And they've 108 yards there right through the middle of the field. And these backs have all benefited from the offensive line who are playing spirited football. They're, they're keeping their blocks and they're got these backs to continue to make big plays. Chris Brown gets a carry here and Brown totes it to the 32 where Cummings makes the tackle for Oklahoma State. Brown in the first half, 12 carries, 41 yards. Kevin Wilson there on the left, the offensive coordinator here at Oklahoma has seen his team put up some impressive numbers again this year. The Sooners last week, of course, struggled for about three quarters after Bradford went out. And then Joey Halsley got it going in the fourth quarter, but it was too late at that point. Bradford here, throwing and incomplete. Intended for Joe John Finley, who had a TD reception earlier, and Price was covering, and Finley almost made a sensational catch. Yeah, they came back to a play that they ran earlier in the ball game where Joe John Finley was open. I talked about that play. It's the play action pass. He comes into the inside, then he's going to work to the outside edge, and ball just overthrown just a little bit there. If it had been out in front of him, he might have been able to get two hands to it. The job of reacting there over the top by the Cowboy defense. So defense takes care of business. Oklahoma's first punt of the day as Mike Nall, the junior from Scottsdale, Arizona, who's taken over all the punting chores of recent day, was splitting them with Michael Cohen. They're not satisfied with Cohen's productivity. And Nall, who was the short guy, has been averaging 41 and a half on the year now and his 15 kicks. And this one taken by Parrish Cox on the 26-yard line. And we'll take a break after a 41-yard punt by Nall. Oklahoma 28, Oklahoma State 10. Where does the Sooner nickname originate from? Stick around on that one. First and 10 for Oklahoma State after they get their first stop of the day. And the punt gives them the ball at the 27-yard line. For Zach Robinson in their second series here in the second half. They missed that field goal on the last series. Here is Robinson. Got time, got a man, complete, Bryant. Stopped near the 41 and then pushed back. By the way, as Lofton makes that tackle, Oklahoma State this year, one of eight in field goal kicking from the 30 plus. That's not great numbers in the field goal operation and need to get points. And here's an opportunity, another opportunity for him to continue down the field. And Zach Robinson showing that he's efficient today and he's he's taking charge and his offense chance to see. 13 yards on that pickup to Bryant. First and 10 at the 41. Bryant, four receptions for 65 yards to pace the Cowboys. Savage, great tackle that time by OU's Jeremy Beal. Yeah, good speed from the defensive end spot. Comes downhill on a on an inside charge there by Beal. Makes a good tackle on Savage. Right at the line of scrimmage. Actually a, a tackle for loss here. Watch Beal come down the line right there and make that play. Well, Beal taking advantage of his playing time. We mentioned with English out with nine and a half sacks. He's missed a couple of games. Davis out with a concussion. He had a couple of sacks this year. And they lost John Williams early on this year with an Achilles tendon injury. So, but they don't lack talent here. Just experience when it comes to some of their depth. Robinson hands off to Savage, taking it outside, and Savage thrown forward almost for the first down by Lindy Holmes. Now this play started inside and Dantrell Savage reads it around the edge and 
Zach Robinson actually helps out here. Watch Zach Robinson, the quarterback, at this play. You see him come inside and watch him come back and seal. He helps out inside, and Savage gets around to the outside. Lindy Holmes going to rest him to the ground. Savage now nine straight games were over 100 yards, 15 for 103 officially, and it's a third and one right at midfield for Oklahoma State. Savage has the first down. Stopped by Smith and Baker. That's right, just past the 50-yard line, and a pretty good spot there by the officials. They're putting the ball down. It's going to be right at or just beyond the first down. They're probably going to measure this thing just to just to take a look at it. Make it official. You know, the scoring we've had in the Big 12 Conference this year, Gary, makes some people think of arena football. We saw what happened yesterday with that crazy output with Nebraska and Colorado. And I know uh, some folks are saying we need to limit it. Your guy who's uh, in arena football is the president <laughs> of the Oklahoma City Yard Dogs and uh, also the head coach. And I uh, want to congratulate you on that because uh, following with today's game, you'll do more full-time duties with that. Yeah, get back in the football mode and get started. Our season starts April through July. We're going to have a... Good season this year. We'll have a couple of home games every month, April, June, July, and it's going to be uh, going to be fun for us there. All right, no, uh, a lot of Cowboys and Sooners that people are following these Bedlam games show up in your rosters as well. And we've got our roster dotted with a few of those players and got an eye on some, and that roster's going to fill out here before long. Make sure you check out those yard dogs in the AF2 and Arena Football in Oklahoma City. Robinson misses on the pass here on a first and ten. He's second down now at the 49 of Oklahoma. Now this is a cat and mouse game here between both these teams defensively. How do you counter with what the offenses do? You take what Larry Fedora and the offense for the Cowboys have done, and how do you deal with that edge play? We talked about the edge play, and it's going to be critical today in this football game. How do the defensive ends account for Zach Robinson and Dantrell Savage around the outside? They've been productive, as has the Oklahoma running game. They've been playing power football where the Cowboys are trying to run a little bit around the edge. Oklahoma State actually out yardaging, if you will, Oklahoma right now, 282, 272, but down on the scoreboard. Pass over the middle is complete to Des Bryant. He picks up a couple. Lofton wraps him up. Boy, Lofton is everywhere once again. He had 18 tackles in the game against Missouri and a fumble recovery for a touchdown to boot. Let's send it down to Emily Jones. Guys, as you know, no shortage of storylines in this game. One of the most obvious is the brotherly connection on uh, the coaching front in this game. Of course, Mike, the head coach of OSU, the former quarterback at Oklahoma State, and Kale, the OU running backs coach, former quarterback at OU. And uh, we talked to both coaches about playing in this game, coaching in this game, and they said there Sooner games, you know that during the Star Spangled Banner, at the end they say the land of the free and the home, and then the crowd interrupts and says Sooners. Well, I was standing next to Keo Bundy before the last game that we had here at Oklahoma, and he got the biggest grin on his face when that happened. And he said, I come out here early every game just so I can hear the fans say that. Obviously, very special on both sidelines for these guys. Yeah, he was leading cheers there for yeah. the defense, and they come up with a huge third down stop as it'll make it fourth and six, and Oklahoma State will punt it away as Fodge will kick here. Smith, the deep man, and out of bounds. See where they spot the footballs. He was trying to put it in the coffin corner that time. Somewhere around the 13. We'll take a break, have it for you when we come back. You know, HDTV and TiVo HD just belong together. Like me. Getting it done on the Dr. Pepper honor rolls. And Dantrell Savage, 3.12 GPA, an education major for the Cowboys. And Adrian Taylor for the Sooners. 3.36 GPA in university studies. Congratulations to two of those not only outstanding athletes, but student athletes. And Savage showing you his athletic prowess again with his ninth consecutive 100-yard game. But Cowboys got stopped. Got a good punt. 32 yards. Went out of bounds. And it's first and 10 at the 13 for Oklahoma to start this series. They had to punt on their first series here in the second half. 
Managed to push his way out to the 15. Picks up a couple here to be second and eight, I believe. Pulling the turf out of his helmet. First down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. With the convenience of shopping at home, you can save up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com. It's all about the O. Bill and Gary Reasons, Emily Jones with you here in Norman. Sooners led it at the half, 28-10. Second possession here. And Patrick wrapped up for a loss on the play. And Maurice Cummings there. So some adjustment has been made, it appears, Gary, as this OSU defense has finally stiffened. Well, they committed seven people to the offensive line of scrimmage that time. Alan Patrick getting the ball in the backfield. And I don't think anybody blocked Cummings here. He just comes underneath the tackle there. On the right side, you're looking at that, and that's Trent Williams. He allows him the right tackle to get inside of him. So good job of making an inside slant charge, move that defensive front, give you a chance to come up inside on these bigger offensive line. See what Bradford does third and 12. He has been very well protected today coming off that concussion from last week. Six of eight for 69 yards and two touchdown tosses. Got all day here, but it's picked off. The Cowboys running it back. Oklahoma State still on his feet. Jacob Lacey coming to the five. Lacey. Touchdown. No, he stepped out at the two-yard line. Lacey comes up with his fifth interception of the season. And Oklahoma State gets the big turnover that it thinks it needed. Well, Sam Bradford tries to fit this ball in there on the sideline. And Jacob Lacey falls back in coverage. He's the corner on the near sideline. So watch number 17. He's going to fall back right here. And he's going to make that play underneath Malcolm Kelly, trying to get it to him on the outside. Sam Bradford didn't put enough air under that football. Nice return here by Lacey. Gets the ball inside the five-yard line and almost puts it in the end zone for a Interception of a touchdown. Junior from Garland, Texas, and now the Cowboys. Another goal line opportunity. First to goal, they mark it at the one yard line. Hope oh, Savage moved. Remember, if you haven't been with us, Oklahoma State was stuffed on a goal line stand the OU defense made in the first half. And Robinson fumbled it trying to take it in. And then OU ended up taking the fumble recovery and starting a drive after that to go oh, score. Offense. Left tackle. Five yard penalty. First down. So Savage moved and Koning was the first to do it. And kind of a chain reaction there, but first down and first and goal here from the five and a half yard line here for Oklahoma State. Still an opportunity to take advantage of this situation. Go, Just to go, execute their plays now. Robinson, 8 of 18 for 105 yards passing. He has run 15 times for 68 yards. Let's see what he comes up with his first and goal. They officially say from the six, but as Gary mentioned, inside there. Savage cuts it right back, and he streaks to the end zone. Touchdown, Cowboys. Dan Trell Savage gets the TD, and Savage, his second touchdown. He had one on the receiving end earlier and the Cowboys now make it 28 16 yeah by expanding the formation the Cowboys allow their offensive line to just stretch and what that does is gives a stretch here allows Savage to read back on the backside good job they're cutting off the backside pursuit and Savage easily gets into the end zone that'll bring on Bailey for the point after attempt sure. And his kick is good. And Oklahoma State making things a little bit more interesting now as the Pokes have gotten the last 10 in the game, and it's 28-17 here in Norman. Tim Duncan leads the Spurs quest for another championship. Every game gets them one step closer to postseason glory. And with Tony Parker at his side, the Spurs look to brush off the targets and continue total domination. The Spurs universe lives on FS. The turnover. And Savage with his second TD of the day. And Oklahoma State will kick it off. And a low line drive kick. And Iglesias will let Patrick pick it up. Patrick cuts it outside. 30. Stays in bounds to the 40 and across to the 39 yard line. Well, Oklahoma State, one of two teams to win here in Bob Stoops' era. 0 1 was the last time. Well, Oklahoma State did a good job coming back in this football game. And one of the 
Only two losses here for Oklahoma's Rashawn Woods and company did a good job with Josh Fields throwing the football for him to make a huge win here and to come back and kind of stun Sooner World and Les Miles, the recipient of a Gator bath there at the end. And huge win here for the Cowboys in 01. And Les Miles did not get a Gatorade shower yesterday as his LSU team knocked off by Arkansas. Levine makes the tackle here. The OU ball carrier and the Sooners will have it second down now and seven. And this Oklahoma State defense has done a pretty decent job here the last two series out, Bill. Two series ago, they stopped them on downs, and now the interception and the points on the board. So Cowboys are feeling pretty good about what they're doing out there defensively against this Oklahoma offense. It ran all over them in the first half. Yeah, the graphic displays that. Sooners keep it on the ground here as Ricky Price makes the tackle. Chris Brown, the ball carrier once again. You got to get down to third down. And Oklahoma's offense, Bill, 48% this season coming into this ball game, completing on third down, converting on third down. And it's the third meeting here, 33 yards to go. So Kevin Wilson's dialing something in here to get this first down for his football team. And the Bradford's last pass was picked off. I'll see if they keep it on the ground or go to the air. Got to throw it. And the look-in is complete to Malcolm Kelly. When in doubt, go to Kelly. Lacey makes the tackle. Kelly coming in, number four all-time in receptions at OU with 139 now. Number two in yardage at OU with 2,203 yards before that catch and 21 touchdowns. Exactly. Sam Bradford knowing exactly where he wants to throw the football out to Malcolm Kelly. Covered there by Jacob Lacey, kind of a mismatch, a 5'10 cornerback and a 6'4 receiver. Kelly getting his first reception the second of the day now and Oklahoma has Andre Sexton making the tackle on him this time as Patrick again with the football. You know, we talked about Joe John Finley, Jermaine Gresham as tight ends. They also have Brody Eldridge, number 83 for the Sooners. So they bring in with their heavy package and he does a good job blocking on the edge and help them win the corner on that play. Good job of getting five yards on first down. And Oklahoma, you heard Mike Gundy say to Emily Jones before the start of the second half, he said, hey, they just whipped us. And that's what Oklahoma is intent on doing. They want to win the physical part of this football game and get back to dominating things in the line of scrimmage. Second and five with 2.07 to go in the third quarter. Bradford here, going to throw it for Kelly. Just missing on the connection. Well covered that time as Parrish Cox running with him down there and gives us a moment to go back to our Aflac trivia question today. And where does the Sooner nickname originate from? Affleck. Certainly original, is it not? As uh, this series, of course, started before the state of Oklahoma was formed in a land run of 1889, settlers who started too soon, well, they were called Sooners. And Oklahoma, it's taught in every uh, American history class across the country. And Oklahoma, of course, got off to that quick start here today. Now trying to reestablish himself. And Patrick picks up the first down on a third and five carry as Donovan Woods, a senior linebacker, making the stop for OSU. And Oklahoma hitting their stride again here, moving the football on the ground, churning up yardage and getting first downs. And Alan Patrick and Reed doing the zone replay here, but Sam Bradford not near the threat that uh, Zach Robinson is with the football. First down here for Oklahoma. Nice job running the football. You know, the running game that Oklahoma's established has also kept their defense off the field, Gary, and and it's allowed OSU fewer possessions. So it makes the importance of these possessions greater as they wind that clock every time they keep it on the ground, too. Brown rambles inside the 15 before he goes out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Parrish Cox, the tackler, will check in with Mike Goldberg and a Dr. Pepper game break. Well, Bill, another overtime thriller. This one today in the SEC. This is the third it's overtime. Tennessee, a two-point conversion away from a trip to the SEC title game to play LSU. But Kentucky makes a stop. Kentucky had a field goal attempt block that would have won it as well. We head to the fourth overtime. Wow, what a season. The Volunteers and the Wildcats <laughs> going at it. And the SEC with a couple triple overtimes, now a quadruple overtime. 
Yesterday, here's a pass in the end zone and a touchdown. Joe John Finley gets his second of the day from Bradford and Oklahoma. About the time Oklahoma State had a little hope. Wait a second, let's get it back together. And Finley gets the TD reception, his third of the season. Well, when you got to deal with the run game that Oklahoma's possessed, and you take a look at Joe John Finley, he runs a little wheel route out to the outside. Nate Peterson's a defensive end, and let's face it, folks, he's not going to cover Joe John Finley all the way down the field into the end zone. Good job by the Oklahoma Sooners controlling the line of scrimmage and allowing Sam Bradford to do a nice, easy play action pass. 12 yard pass play, and Bradford with his third TD against the one pick. And it's 34 17 with Garrett Hartley trying to add to it. It's good. And 35 to 17, Oklahoma. We got 126 remaining in the third quarter. Saturday presented by Kia Sarah. Glad to have you back with us here in Norman. Sooners kicking it off, following the TD pass from Bradford to Joe John Finley. And it is taken by Oklahoma State's Tommy Devereaux at the 20. Good coverage by OSU or their OU. And with the hit on Devereaux is Brian Jackson from DeSoto, Texas, a sophomore. And you've seen the fans got to be happy about what they're doing in the Run the ground, and Coach Stoops not real happy about one of the calls out there. Non call, blocking the back, and the way the Kawasaki uh, scoring drive. Eight plays, 59 yards for Oklahoma. Finley, a second reception of the day for a score. And Cannon Smoke filters over the field as Oklahoma State. See if they can answer again. First and 10 at the 20. in the quarterback it's to throw it on first down mm. underthrown Marcus Walker covering on the play trying to get it to Seth Newton on the outside that ball definitely underthrown Bill and Zach Robinson stepped up into that throw and it just didn't get it there to him Robinson a sophomore on Littleton Colorado played a lot of receiver in high school as well as quarterback and recruited by a lot of the Big 12 schools originally committed to Kansas State at one time before finally signing with OSU. And Savage with a carry here, Beal with a tackle. Beal, Lofton, they've been around the football today for the Oklahoma defense, 44 and 40. Those two guys have made a lot of plays up front, and Beal's showing that uh, he's a capable player, given opportunity, and getting his chance today with a couple defensive ends out. Just a redshirt freshman. Inside a minute remaining here in this third quarter. And another big third down for Oklahoma State. 42 seconds and counting. Third and eight from the Pope 22. Davis, the man that was in motion, the receiver. Robinson and can't connect to Newton again. Walker was covering there. Stops the clock with 30 seconds and a punting situation. Nice effort by the Sooners defense. We're there to turn away this Cowboy offense and not allow him to get that first down and keep things moving. So good job by the Oklahoma offense of putting points on the board and their defense coming out just setting the tone again here. Mike Gundy trying to get a little help on the sideline there. Officiating. So he took off in a sprint. And Fodge with the punt, Reggie Smith. Poor punt. Smith will stay away from it. Goes out of bounds on the Cowboy sideline. Look at that at the 49 yard line for Oklahoma. 29 yards on the kick. And the Sooners, pretty good combination. Excellent field position, 18 point lead. Don't forget, coming up next on FSN, the Apple Cup, Washington State and Washington. Quarterback Alex Brink, fine player. For the Cougs and UW with Lewis Rankin, 178 yards per game for the outstanding tailback. See it all on FSN. Oklahoma. 22 seconds to go in the quarter. Bradford will hand it off. Alan Patrick, what a day he's having. Sprints right up the middle. And Patrick to the 34-yard line before Martel Van Zant makes the tackle. You know, I talked about his burst earlier in the ball game, and when he sees a hole, he tells you to give me a ball, and I'm going to zing right through that hole. He sees a hole. Watch that burst right there. He sees a hole. That's about a four or five-yard wide gaping hole that he saw on the backside. Good job of blocking up front again by this Oklahoma line. They're dominating that, that Cowboy defensive front. 
Patrick, 21 carries, 174 yards as the third quarter ends here in Norman. And Oklahoma just a quarter away from punching its ticket to San Antonio in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game. Stay with us. We'll be right back on FSN. Sooners lead at 35-17. This is real life. And Alan Patrick with a career best 174 yard rushing day here as we go to the fourth quarter and first and 10 at the 34 of OSU for the Sooners. And Bradford will throw to Iglesias. And Iglesias brought down just inside the 15 yard line where Cox and Sexton are there to make the stop. And the Sooners trying to tack on another seven as they go inside the red zone. Well, count those, that's eight people. And so Sam Bradford, who's right here, he sees it. He knows what he's got on the outside, a chance for his receiver to come down inside to make this easy throw. So when you bring eight up there and commit that to the run game, this is what opens the passing game here to Iglesias. And Iglesias picks up 19 yards, first and 10 at the 15 yard line. Bradford to throw it again. Nope, going to keep it, and he's brought down. Thought he had a pretty good opening there, but it closed quickly in the marquee fountain, the senior out of Missouri City, Texas, with the tackle. One of the very few times you just see Sam Bradford run the football, and protection was okay there. Just good coverage in the secondary by Oklahoma State, and they look at the, taking away Alan Patrick there in the middle, and on the outside, he got good, good coverage as well, and so marquee fountain drags him down as uh, Sam Bradford steps up in the hole. Loss on the play, second down 11. Look at Bradford's work. He's moved it around. Iglesias, Gresham, Finley, Patrick, Kelly, and Brown with receptions. And this time in the end zone, we'll see. I think he went out. Alan Patrick trying to dive for the pylon, and he actually stepped out just around the five yard line. Parrish Cox forcing him that direction. Still maybe close enough to a first down, and they're going to put the ball down and perhaps measure this thing. But I'll tell you, this offensive front here for this for this football team has done a good job. They just win the corner. Take a look where he steps out and steps out right there at about the five yard line. That's right there, and I think it's a good spot there by the officials. Well, that might be a little generous of where they're actually we're actually spotting the ball when I look at looking at it from up here. Yeah. Second down and 11 play from the 16, and we'll see as they stretch out the chains. There it is in Oklahoma. First and goal now from just inside the five yard line. And look at his numbers on the day. Wow. A couple of touchdowns, 186 yards, pushing that 200 yard mark. It's just been a workmanlike effort, Bill. It's uh, just been a guy who's just taking it up inside, run the run the plays inside between the tackles. His offensive line has done a great job for him. Duke Robinson, Cooper, the center, and Brandon Walker. I think the guard and center have played very well today. And Phil Lowe, Holton, Trent Williams, both tackles, both chipping in there as well. You're seeing officially they're marking the ball on the four-yard line. Bradford hands it off to Alan Patrick. Stopped a little shy. I want to welcome those of you watching Tennessee and Kentucky. Tennessee winning in four overtimes today, 52-50. Wow. That pushes the balls of Phil Fulmer on to the SEC title game. Well, they win going in. LSU uh, loses going into that ball game. Yeah, interesting. And everybody with a BCS watch on and will be focusing tonight up in Kansas City where the Big 12 North champion will be determined. Yeah, it's going to be a good ball game. And I tell you, the wild card up there is actually a... Jerry Macklin, Jeremy Macklin. I think that he's a guy that's going to be special in that football game fun to watch. I think Missouri may have one more playmaker. Well, you see that big front for OU. Let's we'll see if they can push it in here on a second and goal. And nothing doing. OSU trying to come with a goal line stop of their own. And Ricky Price leading the way that time with the tackle. Yeah, good penetration here by Ricky Price. Strong safety comes up. And he's going to fill outside here. Watch Alan Patrick and just Price just stick his head in front and grab a hold of him. Was Oklahoma beat Missouri, did not play Kansas. Kansas beat Oklahoma State. We look forward to that game this evening. And Missouri was a football team that came here to Norman, Bill, and actually was ahead of the Sooners going into the fourth quarter, then a fumble inside their own 10-yard line, picked up by Curtis Lofton, running into the score, and then another score right after that. So a game that uh, 
kind of took it into the fourth quarter. It's a good competitive football game between the Tigers and the Sooners that night. Sooners want another shot, whether it's Missouri or Kansas for a first time. They just want to win one here. Timeout call. We'll take a break on a third and goal coming. 35-17, Oklahoma. And the timeout here. Our Keystone Light, always smooth moment. A critical moment possibly for OSU going in in the first half. Yeah, and turned away here by the Oklahoma defense. Good goal line stand, and that set up the momentum that they needed to get ahead in this football game, and they've maintained that uh, that edge. Keystone Light, always smooth moment. And those young cheerleaders there getting on camera. They know what to do. Talk to our director, Phil Mollicky. And Oklahoma responds here with a smooth moment of their own as Patrick hangs on long enough to break the plane. And Allen Patrick with his third touchdown of the evening. And the Sooners, 41, Oklahoma State 17. Well, if you had a goal coming into this football game for Bob Stoops, and he says, hey, we're going to be physical, we're going to pound the football. Well, Oklahoma has done that against his Cowboy defense, and Alan Patrick has been the guy who's gotten the, the benefit of some good offensive line blocking, and he's done a good job himself running the football. And power football is back here at Oklahoma. Three-yard run and sets up Hartley for the point after attempt and the Sooners building momentum towards San Antonio and this kick is good and it's now 42 to 17 Sooners with 12 21 remaining here in the football game Bedlam and Norman. I think they call it that. by 25 and kicking it off here to Oklahoma State. Bradford's thrown for three. Patrick has scored three touchdowns. And there'll be a touchback. We'll check in with Mike Goldberg and a Dr. Pepper game break. Great game in the SEC. Fourth overtime. Tennessee leads by two, which means Andre Woodson and Kentucky must convert this two-point conversion to win. They do not. And speaking of winning, Hurricanes, seven touchdown passes today, helps Kentucky win the SEC East. They will play LSU in the SEC championship. And coming up next on FSN, Jake Locker will get the start for Washington as they battle Washington State for the prestigious Apple Cup. That's next. Big rivalry weekend. Thank you, Mike. Congratulations to Tennessee as the balls move on. And first to 10 here at the 20. And Reed coming in as the quarterback and delivers on his first pass as Walker covering on the play. And Oklahoma State completes it to Zach Carter. Carter, a senior out of Kenesaw, Georgia. Bobby Reed, first action in quite some time. 6'3", 235, a junior out of Houston, Texas. And Reed is thrown for 276 yards and a touchdown, 54% completion rate. And keeps the football here, brought down by Granger and Beal. Yeah, not much different with the offense here for Bobby Reed at the helm either. He can run this offense just like Zach Robinson does. And They'll run the football, and they'll use the play-action passing game with him, and he's a very capable quarterback, very talented athlete, and he's just a junior, Bill, so I'm curious to see what Bobby Reed may do if he's not the starter next year, whether he's going to come back to Oklahoma State. Yeah, it'll be a, a big off-season for him. Of course, the Cowboys are going bowling, and they are bowl, bowl eligible for sure at 6-5, and five, and pending a miraculous outcome here, it'll be 6-6, six six. we got 11-17 to go. It's 3rd and 10 for Reed now. Last year, he threw for 24 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Throws this one away as Oklahoma gears up their defensive pressure. And Alonzo Dotson turning up the heat. The center sidelines wanting a potential to grounding call, but uh, not going to get it. He's outside of the pocket. Brent Venables there trying to get something from the officials. Good job by his defense there, turning this Oklahoma State Cowboy offense away. So that'll bring on Matt Fodge, the junior from Garland, Texas, to punt it again. As Oklahoma State, three punts for 35-plus average. And Reggie Smith, 45. And is brought down right about there will be his forward progress marking. And a timeout will take a break as well with Oklahoma in. It's all about the O. 
Welcome back to Norman. Bill Land, Gary Reed, and Emily Jones, the FSN crew with you. Sooners 42 17, first and 10. Ball on their own 46 yard line. Bradford hands it off to Alan Patrick, and not much gain. Brings up the question here with Bobby Reed coming in for Oklahoma State. You start to wonder, all right, Sam Bradford suffered a concussion last week, only played three plays. Joey Halsley came in, took him a while to get his feet under because he hadn't played much. Criticism toward Bob Soups this week was, should Halsey have been playing more earlier in the season when he had the opportunity? And well, this is a perfect opportunity for him to come in the ball game ahead 42-17 at balls at midfield with a meaningful drive here with a chance to do something positive for the offense. Whether you hand the ball off or, you, or play action pass or throw the football, be in a competitive situation. This is what you want for quarterbacks to get them the confidence. And if things happen to your starting quarterback, you got to have them ready to play. Bradford delivers here, and it is complete. Finley having a big day with two touchdown receptions. Scampers out of bounds here at the 28-yard line of Oklahoma State. Price covering on the play. Good job of route running there by Joe John Finley on the outside. And Sam Bradford still continuing to show that he is a very efficient, very accurate passer with the football. And see Finley in the motion here and just come around the outside and work up the field and work all the way to the sideline. This is a long throw here for Sam Bradford, but he puts it in there nicely. Finley, 14 receptions coming in, and today he's got three for, he's got two for touchdowns, 24 yards on that one. And the senior showing up well today for the first football team here, playing the, perhaps his last game at Owen Field. That's good. That's and Patrick carrying the football, headed toward the 200-yard mark. Patrick. With two TDs and Lewis and Chanasa make the stop there. And Alan Patrick getting close to 200 yards in this ball game. Alan Patrick, two TDs on the rushing end, one on the receiving end. Sam Bradford. 10 of 14 for 134 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, and he's got a second and 11 here. Again, OU getting whatever they want, but however they want to get it. And Chris Brown, the carry here, stopped by Chinasa again, and Chris Brown also a very capable running back and did a good job in the first quarter, the second quarter when he was in the ball game. And the offensive line did continue to dominate here tonight against his Cowboy defense. That's been the story, I think, Bill. How they come out, they established the run game. He kind of took all the pressure off of Sam Bradford. The injury last week, not a factor in this ball game because he's been able to efficiently run the offense, throw the ball when he needed to, and, and also he's gotten great production from his run game. And Chris Brown. He's got 16 carries, 71 yards, and a touchdown here today. Might be his best day of the season as well. He had that big game against Missouri. We got a couple of scores. Sooners for 16 yards of offense. And Brown keeps the football here inside the 15 to the 14. Rod Johnson, the tackler for Oklahoma State. And when your offensive line continues to push the pile like they do, it gives these running backs a chance to read it front side or read it back side. Rod Johnson had to stay at home several times today and make plays on the back side after a four or five yard gain. And it's not a good situation for a defensive linebacker to be like that, to have to make that play down the field. Second and six of the 14. We've got 823 remaining. And flag is thrown on this carry. Oklahoma. Shooting for a fifth Big 12 championship under Bob Stoops. They will Holding be. offense number 74. 10 yard penalty, second down. Officials timeout. We've got an injured cowboy on the field. And Levine, I believe. Yep. Patrick Levine. Patrick Levine is down. Looks like he's grabbed his left leg or lower leg. They will attend to him. Now the Sooners will be headed to San Antonio for the Big 12 championship. They'll meet the winner of that big one tonight in Kansas City between Missouri and Kansas. And who knows what this BCS is going to look like when the day is all settled and 
And with LSU, the number one team losing, West Virginia and Ohio State are certainly smiling after the LSU loss with a chance. Obviously, Kansas and Missouri, you got two and four. One of them's going to be dropping down after that game tonight. Well, there's another unbeaten, too. Did you know that? University of Hawaii. University of Hawaii. And I know there's a guy in the stands, in our, in our crew here, that's very happy about that. There's Jeff Qualls, one of our camera operators. And he's from the islands, folks. Yeah. And he's really happy about his, his warriors out there. <laughs> Congratulations, Jeff. He's a... You know, June Jones, we've worked with him before in many games, yeah. and, and the guy, is, it's a miracle he's alive, number one, from the horrific accident he suffered, but a terrific guy, had done a terrific job over there at Hawaii. I, I don't know if they'll get into that top 12 to where they get a chance to get to the BCS, but it's not his fault. He'll play anybody, but they've gotten so good, the big schools don't even want to go over there anymore. No, they don't want to go over there, and they beat a good football team last night in Boise State. That was a pretty good football game. That game went to overtime, and they, can, they, they won that football game, and Tell you, that's a, a program that really has turned around. I, they've got the, a good quarterback in Colt Brennan and explosive offense. So Voters ought to give them a break. Uh, Boise State earned that for that league last year. And asked Oklahoma, second and 15 following the injury. And Sooners come right back with Alan Patrick. And he's a little mad that he didn't break it all the way. Got down near the 10. We'll send it down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, we all know how serious and uh, business like college football can be at times. But when Bob Stoops needs to loosen things up, he looks no further than this guy right behind me. His name is uh, Mr. Clutch. He is Matt McMillan. He's the football operations guy for the Sooner. He keeps a blow horn under his desk, and it can be fired off at any moment. Bob Stoops says he keeps things light. He also keeps things very organized. And you know what? His goofiness actually got him a starring role in a country music video. Toby Keith, the Oklahoma native, was looking for a quote unquote. Uh oh. Touchdown. You got it. As Oklahoma finds gold, go right ahead. Matt McMillan will be happy with this, but Toby Keith, the Oklahoma native, was looking for a quote unquote 40 year old cheese ball to star in his video stays in Mexico. He looked no further than Matt McMillan. He became the star of the video. He's known as Mr. Clutch around the office. He definitely keeps things light and Definitely plenty to be lied about right now for the Sooners, guys. Thank you, Emily. The pass interference call, I believe, was against OSU, and Quinton Chaney gets the TD. Well, with the injury to Adrian Tennell, the Sooners said they'd be moving some other receivers in, and Chaney gets the touchdown reception. The junior from Tulsa, Booker T. Washington, and Oklahoma makes it 48-17. Yeah, big receiver, 6'4", junior, doing a good job there catching one. The point after by Hartley is good, and the Sooners tack on another. We'll be back after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper Bottlers, 49-17 OU. Four TD passes, our Kawasaki OU scoring drive, eight plays, 54 yards. Bradford Cheney, 16 for the final score. You talk about Heisman Trophy possibilities. And Why Sam, not? Sam Bradford on the outside, perhaps? I mean, uh, probably won't get to go to New York, but certainly ought to be considered having an unbelievable year. Forget what year he is. Parrish Cox out of bounds the Cowboys sideline near the 30. And Demario Pleasant covering the special teams for Oklahoma with the stop. 7.16 to go. We'll see if Bobby Reed comes back on. Yep, he'll be the quarterback again here for Oklahoma State. Second series. out of Tyler John Tyler High School out in East Texas gets the carry and he's had a really good year as four, four touchdowns Granger and Baker make the tackle well the FSN group gets together with all the games we had the opportunity to televise and Joel Myers and uh, Dave Lapper Jim Knox who's for Bob Steinfeld and all our crew and of course our crew here with Jeff McElroy our producer and Phil and the gang we all kind of got together threw out some names Hard to argue with that bunch. We'll take a look. I want to just give the credit or blame if you disagree with our selections. And second and six. That list, Bill, is pretty impressive with what yeah. these guys that we've seen this year throughout the league. And 
Big 12 has put up some some pretty good numbers this year. Offense is still we've seen things and offense. We're talking about Chase Daniel. Now, to me, I think that was a consensus among us as a group that if he'd be the quarterback and the offensive player and defensively, Jordan dies on as a tackling machine, a keep to lead with KU's done a great job. And Macklin, that special teams guy, he's been all over it. Mark Mangini, you can't argue with his success. And Michael Crabtree, I tell you, what a breakout year for that young man at Texas Tech. And he's going to be someone that's going to be fun to watch for years to come. Yeah, he and Macklin, uh, boy, household names now in the league that people didn't know much about to start things off. Reed the throw, and it is complete on a third and five. That will move up. Mm. Incomplete, and caught it off the ground. So he trapped it. It was Newton, the receiver. And I couldn't see it tough from up here. The ball, whether it's gone into the turf or not, I'm sure if we take a look at it here, we'll might have a shot at it, but it's going to bring up a fourth down. And the Cowboys are going to be forced to punt. Bobby Reed, a couple of series now, not getting anything getting going. To take a look here at the bottom of your screen on the left side, it's going to be Seth Newton. Does the ball hit the ground? I, I, I whew, sure looks like his hands are underneath that to me. We're going to take another look at it. I think the officials are. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. State. It's their second time out of the half. Oh, he's Coach uh, Coach Gundy is going to allow us to take another look at that because yeah, of the timeout, and it's not a bad use of a timeout, I think, for him. See if the replay folks want to and take a look at it and see what angles we got. And he said that definitely a catch. I could almost I could almost read his lips. <laughs> we got to be careful <laughs> when you read lips anymore these days. <laughs> Yeah, your Mike saying who made the call. Yeah, he wants a replay of it. And there's the replay officials up there in the booth, and that's our that's our feed they're seeing behind there. But they they actually got these monitors here. They've got one, two monitors that they're watching. They actually can play every single play live, and they can replay it instantaneously. They can take any feed that we give them and say, here's another look at it. Take a look at the football, and I mean. Is the ball hitting the ground? I just don't know if it's there or not. The only one who probably is going to know really is number 15, Seth Newton. He might be the one and plus these guys. Uh, well, why don't we just ask him? We don't need to mess with his video. Well, can, Emily, can Emily go over there and just talk have to the him? honor system in college football, <laughs> right? Well, it does give us an opportunity to talk about what's ahead, you know, for these two teams and, and for Oklahoma, a chance to go back to the Big 12 championship game. Uh, Oklahoma State's going to be go bowling. Who knows where at this point because things are really in a jumble. And uh, yesterday, Colorado became bowl eligible yes, with a did. win against Nebraska. Nebraska, of course, if you didn't catch it today, Bill Callahan was uh, let go by the Huskers with the interim AD Tom Osborne making that decision. So a lot of things going on in college football this weekend. After video review, no catch. The play is confirmed. The ball hit the ground. It's fourth down. Okay. Very emphatic with that ruling that, uh, hey, we got it right. Don't argue with us. <laughs> well, Coach Gandy got his replay nonetheless. So fourth down and five now at the 31 yard line. Bodge on to punt it away. Reggie Smith deep at his own 30, setting up for the return. With the referee all the way on the sideline, on the Oklahoma State sideline, talking to the coaches over there. He's over here, right there. So he gave him a detailed explanation. Gotta get your money's worth of that, huh? Yeah, that's right. Got the timeout. Missile. Yes, Fodge, great kick. Smith returned though, pick it up at the nine. To get out of that hole and gets out of bounds about the 17, 18 yard line for Reggie Smith and Oklahoma. Will come on and we'll see if Joey Halsley comes in here. A 60 yard punt, nine yard return. Yep, there is Halsley who comes on and junior out of Huntington Beach, California. And yeah, competed for the starting job here with uh, Sam Bradford in the spring, and Sam was awarded the job. But Joey's been the backup here now for the entire season. He's played in a few ball games, Bill, but not necessarily in meaningful duty until last week against Texas Tech. 
Last week, 21 of 41, 291, two touchdowns and interception. He got a ton of that in the fourth quarter where they almost pulled that game out. And uh, he got very comfortable by that time. That's good. That's good. Hands it off here to Patrick, and that'll put him over the 200-yard mark on a career day for Allen Patrick. He had 199 on, and he'll get a nice hand as he comes off. Cummings made the tackle. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Live better with savings up to 70% on amazing deals. From Overstock.com, it's all about the O. A great night for Allen Patrick running the football, and very physical, explosive runner through the hole, and didn't do it around the outside, Bill. He ran between the tackles for most of his yardage tonight, and very good effort for that young man. You know, they challenged him this week. They have not been happy with uh, some of the running effort from uh, Alan Patrick, and they didn't know exactly what it was. Well, he certainly answered, didn't he? I'm not sure it was so much the effort as much as it was the ball security. Yeah. He, you know, he yeah. had dropped a couple of balls, a couple of fumbles, and one early in the ball game against Tech last week had got him out. And I asked the coaches, is he a little bit in the doghouse? And they said, no, he's not necessarily in the doghouse. It's just that, you know, they're very particular about how they do things. And if you fumble footballs for Bob, foot, for Bob Stoops' football team, you're not going to play. And that was that's kind of the, the thing about Alan Patrick and why he wasn't playing. But but tonight showed that he is a capable, very talented tailback and one that's a big asset here to this program. 202 yards and puts him at 839 on the season. Headed off to San Antonio and then a whole game to boot following that. Third and five. Also puts it up, sings it and complete. They put in Cheney, who had the touchdown on his last reception. Cox makes the tackle. First down, Oklahoma. A Curacao wireless call of the game. Well, let's... I'll tell you what the call of the game is. The running game of this guy, the 200-yard rusher. And Allen Patrick run the ball up the middle of the field all day long with this senior offensive front doing a great job blocking for him. And just physical attack here wore out this Cowboy defense, and he had a career day. 29 carries, 202 yards and two scores on the ground. He also caught one for 11 yards and another score through the air. So Alan Patrick, eight TDs now on the season. And Moises Madu, the 5'11 freshman from Norman, who hasn't played in a long time, getting the carry there. Yeah, the previous play, Joey Halsley has to throw for a first down, does a nice job of throwing the football down the field with coverage and sticks it in there nicely. The first few balls he threw at Tech last week, balls kind of sailed on him, so good to see Joey getting that, getting his opportunity to go in there and throw, throw some completions. Sam Bradford again have a very, very efficient night. Four touchdown passes on the evening. Second down at eight, the ball on the 45 now for Oklahoma. Clock moving at 2.56. Halsley completes this one. Throwing out of the backfield, Ian Pleasant makes the reception. Pleasant is a senior from Alexandria, Virginia, 5'10", 215-pounder. It's his second reception of the year. There's Sam Bradford. And what a year you talk about college freshman quarterbacks he's a redshirt freshman but look at the numbers and yeah it's a little bit different era but still look at the names with those numbers well this is the thing that's impressive right here to me that right there that mark 32 touchdowns for this young man as a freshman that's a record as a, as a freshman in the ncaa and that might stand for some time yeah dan marino got the nice locks yeah i don't know as, about that. Uh, but you know <laughs> and, and the ratio gary 32 to 7. I mean, forget the times. Obviously, the yardage is much higher because of the nature of the wide open offenses. But when you have that kind of touchdown to INT ratio, that is something. 70% completions, you know, on the season. That, that's tremendous number. So what he's done is remarkable as a freshman. I don't care, you know, as freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. That's that's uh, those are tremendous numbers for a quarterback. And talk to about potentially the Heisman. Well, if not this year, I think that Sam Bradford certainly has to be included in discussions for. No future seasons. Well, look at this league and the quarterbacks and a uh, guy like McGee coming back at AM. Colt McCoy, who had a good year this year after a great freshman year, is just going to be a junior next year. The guys up in Missouri tonight uh, with Chase Daniel and Todd Reesing uh, both coming back next year. And uh, you look around the league, Freeman at Kansas State. This conference offensively has been a powerhouse this year. It's only going to be stronger next year. First and 10 at the 46. You know, Zach Robinson's just a sophomore. 
quarterback play is key in this conference. There's no doubt about that. And you have a chance to continue that success. A lot of teams have great quarterback play and young guys as well. Ladu on that last carry again. Look at the OSU bench as Robinson today ends up with 15 carries, 68 yards, running the football. He was 8 of 20 in the throwing game for 105 yards and a TD. And a lot of guys getting a chance to play in this ball game now, late in the ball game, and understanding what this rivalry is. We talk about it. It's one of the best rivalries, I think, in college football. Second and nine at the 45 for Oklahoma with 140 to go. Balls again, hands it off, and Madhu, who, even though he hasn't played a lot, he came in with 29 carries, 169 yards. This is a guy they're very excited about. It's just been a log jam at tailback as Johnson makes the tackle. Well, those and news and notes from around the Big 12, the KU-Missouri game, we mentioned the oldest rivalry in football. It's never been bigger or better than this one. Now, this will be one they'll all remember. Dennis Franchoni resigned yesterday under pressure after a huge win over Texas, and Bill Callahan fired this morning. And, of course, Guy Morris let go after last week's Baylor loss, so there's three coaching jobs available in this league as well. Yeah, and really, the winner tonight, Kansas, Missouri, realistically, the winner of that ball game is probably going to move to the number one spot in the BCS. That, that's yeah. amazing. Well, certainly if Kansas wins, and very likely if Missouri does. Madhu tripped up at the 35. He had notions of going further, but he does get the first down with inside a minute to go, and Price makes the tackle. Yeah, while well, we got him in, I'd like to thank our crew, Jeff Muckleroy, our producer, and all the guys that are out on the cameras. They do all the hard work to give us the great pictures this year. It's been a great fun season for college football here on FSN, and it's been a great job. Enjoyed working with them, and Bill, enjoyed working with you and Emily as well. Been a great time. Thanks to uh, all of the crew, Director Phil Malico today, Scott Toman with our cameraman extraordinaire, as well as uh, all the folks we've had with uh, both of our FSN crews, and I know I speak uh, for, for the rest of that bunch as well. It has been great fun, and thanks so much to all the men and women that, that made our job so much easier up here, as well as to the coaches and the athletic officials with the schools. And Sexton and Nethon make the tackle here on Madhu, and that ought to do it with 16 seconds to go. And Oklahoma, your Big 12 South champion and representative in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game next week in San Antonio as the Sooners win it 49 to 17. And Oklahoma going back to the title game once again, and they'll sit back and watch and see who their opponent will be tonight when Kansas and Missouri battle. Bob Stoops, his congratulations from Mike Gundy. Big day, a big bounce back day for Sam Bradford and crew. Yeah, the offense did exceptionally well, running the football. Power football was the name of the game for Oklahoma today. Offensive line took over, and Alan Patrick had a career day. Sam Bradford very, very efficient, no doubt about that. And everybody got into the action for this football team. And I think defensively, they answered what they answered the bell and slowing down the powerful Oklahoma State offense. Yeah, uh, very fierce rivalry, but when it's over, the players, uh, many of them, of course, competed in alongside and against one of their high school days and congratulations to the Sooners, a winner here today. Let's send it down to Emily Jones with the head coach, Bob Stoops. That's right, and I will congratulate Coach Bob Stoops, the South Division champs that took care of your business today. Yes, uh, we did. It's been, a, it's been a heck of a year, I know, uh, for everybody, but the guys really played well today. Uh, proud of them and and uh, love the way they executed. Talk about the performance of Alan Patrick today. Well, it was awesome. Alan's a really good football player for us, and uh, he loved how he bounced back from last week and had a heck of a game in his senior night out here, and guys blocked well for him, and really everyone just executed in a really good way. Coach, you talked about the ups and downs of this season, but you've also talked about the character of these kids um, and how this is, has been a special bunch for you. How important was this win here at home on senior night? Uh, it's important to lock up the South, to beat an in-state rival, give ourselves a chance for another Big 12 championship. That's where it goes, where, where it begins for us every year. And uh, this has been a great group of young guys to work with every day. I haven't had any problems with them. They, I mean, at, at all, they're really fun to see every day. So we got another big game next week. Well, Coach, we've had you right. four times this season. We feel like we're your personal uh, broadcast well, group. Good luck for us. So, <laughs> congratulations to you, Coach Stoops. Guys, send it back up to you. All right. Thanks very much, Emily. And, and people should not underestimate the importance of what they've accomplished. Everything centers so much around national championships and programs like this. Fans sometimes get so disappointed. This is a huge accomplishment to go back to the Big 12 title game. And 
I just wanted to reiterate that point, Gary, because sometimes people don't appreciate how hard it is just to get to the title game. Yeah, and Bob Stoops, his goal is to win the Big 12 South, get to the Big 12 championship game, win that, and anything else after that is will, will take care of itself, whether it's national championships or bowls or BCS bowls. All those things will take care of themselves. And, you know, he now, he's now 54-2 and two at home, a tremendous, tremendous record. That's the best since, uh, in, you know, I think in college football over the last several years. Yeah, since 99, they've been phenomenal here. All right, for Gary Reason, Emily Jones, our entire crew, Bill Lansing, so long from Norman, Oklahoma. Don't touch that remote. Coming up next, College Football Saturday continues. It's the Apple Cup, Washington, and Washington State. It's all on FSN College Football Saturday, our final again, Oklahoma 49, Oklahoma State 17. Hope you enjoyed it. So long from Norman.